Hi, this is Alana. I am here with Jamie, and we want to welcome you to the Praying Christian Women podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about one mental shift that can really help you if you're having a hard time making prayer a priority. And I hope this is going to be a very encouraging show for you. As always, we are all about giving you guilt-free inspiration to grow in your prayer life. And that is our hope of what this episode is going to be. So let's start with a word of prayer. God, we just ask that you would be present with us now and just bring to mind any lies from the enemy, any guilt or condemnation about our prayer lives and about the time or the effort that we spend in prayer. We just pray that those would be just cast aside and that we could walk into this podcast episode with open hearts and open minds and just be excited about prayer and excited about uh, moving on to the next level and just striving forward and not looking behind us. And we just thank you so much for your power and just for being with us, God. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for today is from... Acts, Acts chapter 4, verses 27 to 31. And this is a, a from, it's a part of a prayer that the believers prayed after Peter and John were released after they went before the Sanhedrin. And um, they're saying, Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. And I think this is a really neat segue into this mental shift that's necessary if you're feeling like you're having trouble finding time to pray. Um, because the way that the early church looked at prayer was that it it was the work it was it was the the key to everything that they did and um the so the prayer was the real work and so after they prayed that they prayed so powerfully this place was shaken and they were they received the holy spirit and they they went forth and they did speak the word of god boldly in a way that if they had just gone forth in their own strength never would have happened. So what a neat reminder. You know, I hadn't thought about it when we were getting our notes ready for the show, but I'm glad you pointed to Acts because there's also the story of when the apostles kind of got bombarded because they were doing so much and there was that argument about who which widows were getting food distributed and which weren't. And the apostles came back and said, Hey, our job is to vote ourselves to the word and devote ourselves to prayer. Hmm. We need, you know, we can't be waiting on tables and doing this. And and they also recognize, just like you said, prayer is the real work, which is what we're going to be talking about, you know, as this mental shift that can help us, you know, make prayer the priority that it should be. So on the topic of work, what's the most weird or interesting job you've ever had? That was hard. I think I, I love, I've loved all of my jobs. And mm -hmm. I, I think one of the most interesting was working in a science lab, research lab as a lab tech. And um, I worked in several different ones, but um, one of the one of the most interesting ones. I worked in an animal science molecular biology lab, and mm -hmm. I worked on a uh, diagnosing or genotyping pigs for a disease called porcine stress syndrome. And so I would run, you know, basically extract DNA from pig tails because pigs have their tails docked when they're piglets. So I would take these pig tails and grind them up and extract the DNA yeah. and then test them for this gene. And um, it was just interesting finding out about the disease because this, G this, this gene, it's called the halothane gene, and it actually, when the, when the pigs go to, um, to be turned into bacon, <laughs> I don't want to say the word slaughter, but <laughs> when they go to be turned into bacon, um, they get stressed and this gene gets turned on and they basically just fall down dead. And really interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. So anyway, um, does that make the butcher's job a lot easier? 
I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I think now I think one of the reasons that we were doing this is if they fall down dead before they are meant to die, then I don't think they can it doesn't work, right? Those yeah. pigs for meat. So uh -huh. I don't know. I'd have to go back in my notes to find out exactly the application. But that was interesting because I actually did get, well, I'm, yeah. Yeah, that's probably good enough. <laughs> it was an interesting job. How about you? <laughs> I, had, I had a just as unique job. I was only 16 when I started working at a hospital lab. And we got all the surgical specimens, so it was connected to the pathology lab. And I'm not going into detail at all, but I actually was assisting with autopsies. And so that was, you know, kind of crazy. Oh, so, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely something like with our science backgrounds we could talk about off the air, but <laughs> I'm yeah. sure there are people who don't really want to hear. I know. I have trouble with the boundaries, you know, and yeah, at the right. table especially, my parents would always oh, no. joke around about how I just did not have a filter. So I apologize right. for anyone out there that I gave TMI. <laughs> well, let's start with excuses that people make because we're talking about we're really talking to people who are having a hard time making prayer the priority it should be, which probably is all of us at some, to some degree and at some stage in our prayer lives. What are some of the most common excuses that we come up with? Um, that you're not um, particularly gifted in prayer, like, oh, prayers for other people. You know, you yeah. haven't mind what a prayer warrior is. And maybe we have people at your church that are like the go-to people that um, I think about the, the book, The Help, and the movie mm -hmm. that was made where one of the women, um, Abilene, like they were almost superstitious about being on her prayer mm -hmm. list. Like you don't want to be on her prayer list if she doesn't like you. And like, we want to be on her prayer list. Maybe you have people like that, that seem to have like a special connection with God. And you think, oh, I could never be like that. Um, yeah. It's interesting because there are several parts of the new Testament that talk about spiritual gifts. And I know that like the gift of faith is mentioned, but I'm pretty sure it never mentions a gift of prayer, right? No, I don't think so either because I've, I've kind of looked into that because I, I don't think it is. And it's for everybody. <laughs> it is for everybody. And the other thing is just because your prayers don't look like someone that prays in a different way. Like I've been intimidated by people where I think, wow, their yeah. prayers just seem to like bring down heaven. And mm -hmm maybe your prayers are bringing down heaven just as powerfully, but maybe they just don't conjure up an emotion in people because of the way that you're right. praying or, but that doesn't mean that your prayers are less powerful. God has created all of us, many members of the body. And you know, you could, you could pray the simplest, just most heartfelt, fewest words prayer and mm -hmm. and that could be every bit as powerful as a big long soliloquy that everyone's like amen sister <laughs> that doesn't happen at my prayer meetings i don't think we do the amen sister thing no you don't okay <laughs> <laughs> well you know another excuse is um and i want to be careful with this one because i feel like yes this should be a thing but not an excuse and that's when people say well i I pray throughout the day, so I don't really need to have a quiet time. So on the one hand, I feel like, yes, praying throughout the day is wonderful. It's perfect. It's what we should strive for. But it's also not a replacement for having set aside time with the Lord. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a balance for sure. You know, I think you need both. It's like the couple who says, oh, we never go on dates because we see each other every day <laughs> you know like well yeah it's a good thing to see each other every day it's also a good thing to go and spend time together you know yeah definitely and you know like you said there is no guilt here so not to guilt you into if you're a pray through the day kind of person because that's the kind of person i am i really i think it's great to pray through the day and praise god that you're in tune enough with god to just be praying mm -hmm. those little prayers throughout the day but one, you know, I, I definitely know that, um, that, that it's not an excuse to yeah. keep well, from that time. For sure. Here's what I find. I find that when I have set aside time to pray, and again, I'm not saying that it has to be a certain amount every day, but when I make it a priority to have certain chunks that are set aside for prayer, it makes me more prayerful during the day. 
mm-hmm. you know, and not the other way around. <laughs> like, so setting aside the time is what helps me to be mindful of continuing to pray through the day. And I think a healthy prayer life is going to have a balance of both. Yeah, definitely. Well, and going right hand in hand with that, I think for me personally, as you kind of feel like another excuse is I'm too busy doing God's work. I'm doing these things that are important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not, I don't need to pray for them. And I just, I definitely tend to be a Martha in my prayer life and my spiritual life. I'm, I, and I have many times gotten to this place where I have felt like prayer is. I hate to say it, but I have these thoughts. Prayer is a waste of time. Why are we sitting around in this prayer meeting praying about this stuff? Why are we doing something? When we could go out and feed the homeless or, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, do this service project or, you know, whatever it is. And I have to really catch myself because, and and confess and repent because I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a Mary that needs to become more of a Martha. And, mm-hmm. and not even the Mary and Martha, but I think there's a deeper, um, not just a busyness component, but I think for me, it's been a lack of faith because if I truly in my heart of hearts at that moment believed and realized that God works powerfully through prayer, I wouldn't even question that prayer needed to happen first. Yes. But I think somewhere in my mind, not that I don't on my conscious level, know that God works through prayer. But, you know, if I really was conscious of that and truly believing with everything that is in me at that moment, um, there, there wouldn't be a question that prayer is the real work and needed. And I think prayer is going to lead us to the acts of service, the acts of ministry, you know, like Mm -hmm. sometimes I wonder, is there ever a point where you can pray for something too much? Like, is there ever a point where you make prayer an excuse to not act? You know, like, I do wonder about that. Like, what if I'm just, let's take an unsaved family member. If I'm spending all this time and energy praying for this person to come to salvation, is it possible that I'm making that an excuse? And what God really wants me to do is go and witness to this person. But I think, yeah, maybe it can be an excuse. But I think that in general, if you truly are genuinely praying for that person's salvation so fervently, and thoroughly, there's going to be something in you that's going to compel you to take the practical steps of witnessing and stuff like that as well. Do you know what I mean? Oh, definitely. It makes me want to revisit like Nehemiah and the wall because, you know, I, I just always think of that, that picture of a sword in one hand yeah. and uh, tools the in the other hand. Or, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the sp- sword of the spirit is the word of God. And there's a battle that we need to be fighting. And I really think that that's a really neat picture of, yeah, you got to be fighting with one hand and building with the other hand. There, there are two need to go hand in hand. Literally. I do. But I, I would also say that this is not a case of the chicken and the egg. I really right. feel like prayer does prayer come has first. To be the foundation. It has to be the foundation. Otherwise, you're just throwing something out there and hoping it's going to work. Whereas if you really go into it with the power of prayer, I think about the walls of Jericho, you mm-hmm. know, and I think about them marching around these walls each day. And I, I picture that as a very prayerful experience. And then they blow these trumpets and the walls come down. And then they still have to go in and take the city, you know. It's yeah. not that the walls fall down and the people who lived there vanish and they say, oh, great, now we have homes. They still had to go in and take the city. And, you know, not that any Christian today would ever be called to go and like sack an entire village. (laughs) But I feel like prayer came first. Prayer got them through those walls. And then they had the power of God behind them to do the work. So I feel like Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, that that's literally like a perfect biblical illustration of our quote that that you had asked me to put in our notes, the S.D. Gordon quote. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where he says, prayer strikes the winning blow. Service is simply picking up the pieces. It's one of our favorite quotes because, um, but that Jericho story, that's a perfect example of that. Right. Prayer, it struck the winning blow. The walls came down. Now they had to go in and pick up the pieces and do the work to, to finish the job, so to speak. Yeah. Right. Now imagine what would have happened if they had this committee and the committee was like, what are we doing praying? We need to go in and, you know, find a way to get in here. 
you know, like, no, they had to, prayer had to come first. And prayer is what made the work that they did afterwards have the power that it did. And I have to wonder, you know, there are so many times when, not to say that everything God is calling to us, calling us to is going to be easy, but there are times when, you know, you kind of bullheadedly go through with what you think is right. And there's roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think that's probably the enemy. But I also think sometimes there are things where, okay, so if I had been praying about this thing first, would it have made that, you know, would I not have to figure out how to scale the wall to get into Jericho? Um, so I don't know. I've wondered about that too, you know, that, that relationship between the hurdles and, you know, just the importance of, of being, being intentionally prayerful so that yeah. there, so that those things that, that could be removed as barriers from God's work could be removed ahead of time. Yeah. I wonder about those things too. And I feel like the opposite extreme would to be get would be getting like really superstitious about it. Oh, you yeah. Know? And and that's that could be a very paralyzing thing. You know, like, mm -hmm. oh, I can't take another step because I don't feel like I've prayed enough. Like sometimes no, you just take the step. <laughs> right. Um, or, you know, something goes wrong and it's, oh, I should have prayed about this. And I, I do mm -hmm. feel like probably there are times and I've, I've felt conviction about that sometimes. And sometimes life just happens, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it's not always clear what's a result of spiritual attack. What's the result right. of our negligence in prayer. And what really is just the fact that like gravity exists and, yes. exist, and you know, other things like that. <laughs> uh, yes. And yeah. And in that, and, and of course you move forward, you ask for discernment, but it never hurts to pray more. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And I feel like that last excuse we talked about of, you know, I'm too busy doing God's work. You know, mm -hmm. like some people are called to do the prayer and some people are called to do the work. I feel like I really fell into that for like a couple of years. I really am ashamed to admit it. But when I started writing my Christian novels, my prayer life looked drastically differently than it did before because so much of my mental and creative energy was being thrown into these books I was writing. And I justified it for a long time that way. It was, I'm in the season now where God has called me to write these books. And I still thoroughly believe that to be true. But I also know that I got to the point where if I was not um, connecting with God regularly, I was just coasting on like old spiritual energy <laughs> And eventually that runs out, you know, and I hit some brick walls. Like even just this past summer, we moved and it was a few months before I really got back to where I could even think about being in a writing mindset again. And so I took some time off and, you know, spent a lot of extra time in prayer. And I felt really guilty because I'm like, okay, God, you've called me to be a writer. I so thoroughly believe that, but I'm not working and what I really realized, it hit me so clearly, it was that prayer is the real work. You know, like I was sitting in my prayer chair, I've talked about it before on the show, and, you know, it was such a clear message, because I was complaining that I wasn't working, and I was just spending all my, my extra time that I would be writing, praying, and, you know, God really helped switch that mindset where prayer is the real work. And everything that comes out from that is, how did, how did the S. Gordon quote go? Prayer strikes the winning blow. Service is simply picking up the pieces. Mm -hmm. you know? So my real work happens when I'm praying. And the rest of the ministry and the service is what follows. Yeah. And I, I think that can apply to just about every aspect of your life. Just every, you know, whether it, it's a spiritual commission and, and spiritual work you're trying to accomplish or whether it's just going to work every day, you know, it's, um, it's all part of the same sphere of God's plan. And, and he's just, I think it's dangerous to separate, you know, well, God's concerned about my church work, but he's not concerned about, you know, so serving food in the cafeteria to kids or, you right. know, whatever, whatever it is that your job happens to be. So yeah. Yeah. Whatever we're doing, it should be done for the glory of God mm -hmm. so that, you know, driving the car to, um, to do your carpool is just as important and can be just as glorifying to God 
as, you know, being the Sunday school teacher or, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it should all be for God's glory. And looking, so, go ahead. Oh, well, the lot, I was just going to say, and, and looking for God in those things. I think as we train ourselves to pray first, um, it, it focuses our minds to be able to see God at work in what we're doing. I think if we just jumped right into it, we might not even have the mindset of, of seeing the glimpses of what God is doing and, and even how those prayers are being answered, giving, giving God opportunities for that glory of, of just recognizing his particular work and his hand in the things that we're going about doing in our day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, well said. You know, going back to the list we started with of excuses that people can make to not be as prayerful as they should, I feel like one more that we should definitely add to that and discuss is just this concept of there really isn't time. So maybe it's not that they're saying, well, I'm busy doing God's work, so I'm exempt from having to pray more, but not just in being involved in Christian ministry, but just being a busy Christian woman today, you know? So what I, you know, I feel like we're at risk of diving into a whole other episode topic, but you know, when we're talking about this mind, mind shift or a mental shift, how can that apply to the people who just really don't feel like there's enough time to pray like they should or want to? I always think about that example. I think in the business world, they use it where they take a jar and you've got a bunch of big rocks and you've got a bunch of little rocks and then you've got pebbles and then you've got sand and they tell people to put those things into the jar. And if you start with the little things, then you'll never be able to fit everything in. If you put all the sand in first, there's no way you're going to get all the big rocks in. But if you start with the big rocks, the priorities, they say, you know, these are the priorities. There's always going to be time for the things that you make a priority. And so you put the big rocks in first, then you put the smaller ones and they kind of filter through and then the sand sort of fills in all the gaps. Mm -hmm. I think that's shifting your mindset to prayer is important. It's going to put it on the front burner and you're going to make it happen. And, and, you know, it, like you said, there are other episodes and other resources that, that will, you know, along the way that we would love to equip you with, but just in, in the short term, you know, I think just, um, giving God the first fruits. So even if it's like, mm, a, good point. you know, even if it's just, um, before you drop your kids off to school, you know, even just praying with them before you drop them off to school. Or, you know, if you're talking to your kids or your grandkids on the phone, you can, um, you know, say a prayer with them or for them. Or um, I think when your mindset is shifted, you will find pockets that you didn't even know were there to incorporate prayer into these situations. Um, That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we hope, again, that this show and this specific episode gave you some just useful tips and encouragement that you could take along with you. And if you did not hear, we have added a new part to our show where on some episodes, we're going to be answering questions you have about prayer. So if you want to send us a question and maybe even win a prize if we read your question on the air and turn it into one of our shows, please contact us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And if you have not grabbed it yet, we also want to invite you to get your free prayer journal that we have made for you at prayingchristianwomen.com slash journal. And now, like always, we want to leave you with our blessing and benediction. May God stretch and mature your faith on a daily basis. May mountains move as a result of your prayers. May he meet you in areas of weakness and help you in your unbelief. May valleys rise up and mountains and hills be made low before you so that nothing will hinder your prayers. May the Holy Spirit breathe hope into your prayers so that every day your faith and strength are renewed like the eagles. And our benediction is from Galatians 6.18. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen.